join kids hat family good night tia good night tofu Once upon a time there lived a lonely couple who only wished to have a child. They lived in a little house all on their own. At the back of the house there was a small little window from which a splendid garden could be seen. This garden was full of very beautiful flowers and herbs. No one dared to enter the garden as it belonged to a witch. named Dame Gothel One day the woman saw a plant called rampion which is used to make salads Dear husband I have a strong desire to have a salad made out of that plant Oh but that belongs to the wicked witch Oh please do something I really want to eat those rampions Okay dear I will try to get it for you At midnight the husband climbed the wall into the garden of the witch and started taking some rampions The man took the rampion and his wife made a salad out of it and ate it But the very same night there was a knock on the door and the man knew something was wrong How dare you you men come into my garden and steal my rampions like a thief You will suffer for it Oh please forgive me my wife saw your rampions from the window and she wanted it so bad that I could not say no to her Oh If that's the truth then I will let you have as many rampions as your wife wants but only on one condition What is that condition You must give me the child which your wife will bring into this world The man in his terror consented to everything As time passed by the couple gave birth to a beautiful little baby girl But that very same night the witch came to their door and took away the baby girl leaving the poor parents in complete sorrow You are such a beautiful looking girl I will name you Rapunzel and take care of you Ha 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 The witch kept her locked in a tower with no doors and stairs but just a small little window as the time passed by rapunzel grew into a beautiful girl with very long golden locks but her beauty went in vain because the cruel witch never allowed her to go anywhere sad rapunzel just used to stand at the little window and sing sad songs When the witch had to visit Rapunzel, she used to ask Rapunzel to let down her hair. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. One day when Rapunzel was standing at the window singing sad songs la 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 a very handsome prince was passing by 
he stopped and looked here and there to see where this beautiful voice was coming from. La la la. Oh, what a beautiful song. Who is singing so beautifully? The prince noticed the beautiful voice coming from the tower. He wanted to climb the tower and looked for the door, but could not find one. He went back home in dismay. But Rapunzel's singing had touched his heart so much that every day he started going to the forest to listen to Rapunzel's song. One day, he was standing behind the tree when he saw the witch coming. And he heard what she said. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair to me. Then Rapunzel let down her long beautiful hair. And the witch climbed up the tower. Oh, that's the way to climb up to the tower. I shall do the same. The next day, when it began to grow dark, he went to the tower. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down to me. Immediately the hair fell down and the prince climbed up. Oh! Who are you? Oh Lord! You are the most beautiful maiden that I have ever seen in my life. I have lost my heart to you. Will you marry me? Will you be my wife and live with me in my kingdom? Oh, my prince, I wish that was possible. But the witch won't let me go out of this tower. And if she comes to know about you, she will kill you. I don't care. You are coming with me now. Come on, let's go. Oh, prince, I am ready to go away with you. But I do not know how to get down. If I let down my hair, then how will I get down? You are right. Mm. You have to go now. The witch will come soon. Yes. Don't worry, Rapunzel. I will think of something and come back tomorrow. That moment when the prince was climbing down the tower, the witch saw him. Oh! So he wants to take Rapunzel away. They both will have to pay for this. The witch climbed the tower after asking Rapunzel to let down her hair. You treacherous girl! How could you even think of betraying me? You shall pay for this. The witch took a big pair of scissors and chopped off her long beautiful tresses. Rapunzel was left all alone in the desert by the witch to live in grief and misery. Meanwhile, the prince returned the next evening to take Rapunzel away. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The wicked witch let down the long braid that she had chopped off from Rapunzel's hair and the prince climbed the tower without knowing what danger was awaiting him. When the prince was about to enter the window, the wicked witch chopped off the braid just to see the prince fall off the tower into the thorny bushes under the tower. The prince started bleeding from his eyes as the thorns blinded him completely. 
The witch cast a spell on the prince. And he wandered in woods around the world without any sight and survived in poor conditions. Meanwhile, the prince roamed about in misery for two years and finally he got to the desert where Rapunzel was left by the witch. La, la, la. He suddenly heard the beautiful sad voice of his beloved and started shouting in excitement. That voice! That voice! Is it you, Rapunzel? Is it really you? He went towards it and when he approached, Rapunzel said, Oh Prince, you finally found me. I missed you so much. I am so happy to see you that I can't stop crying. Two of her tears fell on his eyes and they grew clear again and he could see with them as before. I can see again. Oh my sweet Rapunzel, what have they done to us? Let's go back to my kingdom. He took her to his kingdom. After a year, Rapunzel gave birth to a pretty little baby girl who looked just like her and they lived happily ever after. Get up, Tofu! Or you'll get late for school. Get up, Tofu! <sighs> Dia, you? <laughs> what happened? That... That was... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. That was me in your dream. Now get up and get ready. John stays with his cousins. Yesterday, he came late to the class and the teacher scolded him a lot. John said his cousin brothers made him finish their course before they let him leave for school. He said they always trouble him and make him do a lot of housework. Oh no! He must feel really bad. John is a very nice boy. He doesn't disobey anyone. He is very nice to his cousin brothers despite the way they treat him. That is very nice of him. We should always forgive people for their mistakes. Have you heard the story of Cinderella? Once upon a time, there lived a young girl called Cinderella. Cinderella's mother had died and so her father had married another woman who had two daughters. One day, Cinderella's father went to work and never returned. Cinderella was left at the mercy of her stepmother and two stepsisters who made her do all the work of the house. Cinderella, it's morning already. Where is our breakfast? Just a moment, stepmother. I am just bringing it out. As soon as Cinderella had laid the breakfast, the stepmother and stepsisters started eating it. Cinderella served her own plate too and was about to eat when her stepsister pushed her own plate away. Yuck! I hate it! Yes, now that you mention it, it really is horrible. Mother, do something! Cinderella, are you trying to kill us? 
What kind of food is this? But, but stepmother, I have made it the way I always make it. How dare you argue with me? Go and make new breakfast for us. Don't you dare do anything else till we have had our breakfast. And this is what went on in their house every day. The stepmother and stepsisters troubled Cinderella without any reason. But Cinderella loved them still and never ever complained. One day, an announcement was made in the village. Let everybody know. There will be a royal ball at the palace tomorrow night and the king's son, Prince Charming, will marry a maiden from amongst the guests. Everybody from the village is invited. The whole village was excited. Even Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters couldn't stop talking about it in the house. And that is how Cinderella found out about the ball. The royal ball! Prince Charming! The whole village is invited! I will finish my work quickly so we can all go together. Won't it be just wonderful? You! Who said anything about you going? You will stay here and polish our shoes till you can see your face in them. And so with a heavy heart, Cinderella saw her stepmother and stepsisters dress up and leave for the royal ball the next day. Once they had left, she cried bitterly. Suddenly, her room lit up and Cinderella saw the most beautiful fairy she could imagine. She held in her hand a delicate wand. Who are you? Get up, child. I am your fairy godmother. I am here to get you to the royal ball. Really? I never knew I had a fairy godmother. But how will I get to the ball? I don't have anything to wear. You don't worry about that, my child. And so, in just a few minutes, Cinderella was ready for the royal ball. As she thanked her fairy godmother and got aboard the chariot, she received a word of caution from the fairy godmother. Remember to be back home at 12, otherwise the spell will wear off. Soon Cinderella arrived at the palace. As she entered the great ballroom, everyone turned to look who this beautiful maiden was. Nobody could recognize her. Not even her own stepmother and stepsisters. Prince Charming walked to her. May I have this dance with you? Yes, Your Highness. And so Cinderella 
and Prince Charming dance together throughout the evening. Till Cinderella heard the clock strike. Fairy Godmother's words came back to her. She needed to get out of there before the clock struck 12. Without saying a word, she tore away from the prince's grasp and ran out of the palace. The prince ran after her. Wait, wait! What is wrong? Why are you running? I don't even know your name. But Cinderella dared not wait or even look back. Her beautiful gown was already turning into rags again. Her hair was coming loose from the perfect bun that the fairy godmother had made for her. She didn't even stop when one of the glass slippers came off her foot and fell in the palace driveway. She ran out of the palace gates and vanished into the darkness on a path that led to her home. Once home, she went back to polishing the shoes that had been given to her and decided never to speak to anyone about the ball. A few days later, two men from the palace showed up at their door. The lady that Prince Charming fell in love with left behind her glass slipper at the royal ball. The prince believes that such a beautiful slipper could fit only his beloved. And so we're asking all the girls in the village to try the slipper. The one whom it fits would be the one the prince will marry. If you have any girls in the house, please ask them to try the slipper. Oh, yes, yes. I am sure it was one of my daughters. The slipper would fit one of them. And so both the stepsisters tried to fit their foot into the slipper one by one. They pushed and pushed but couldn't get their foot in. Looks like it wasn't your daughter's after all. Is there any other young lady in the house? No, there isn't. You can leave. As the king's men made ready to leave, suddenly the door of the house was thrown open. And Prince Charming himself stood there. Who is this beautiful girl in the upstairs window? Madam, you have lied to us. I demand that the girl be called forth and try the slipper. Y yes, yes, but she is only a servant girl. Nevertheless, Cinderella, Cinderella, come down here at once. Yes, stepmother. The moment Prince Charming saw Cinderella, he knew he had found his beloved. He took the slipper from the king's man and slipped it on to her foot himself. The slipper fit perfectly in a moment. Cinderella was once again transformed into the beautiful maiden from the night of the ball. Prince Charming took her to the palace with him. He ordered that the stepmother and stepsisters be punished for lying to the king's men and treating Cinderella so badly and rudely. But being the kind-hearted person that she was, Cinderella asked for them to be forgiven. The prince fell in love with her 
even more for her generosity and they lived happily ever after wow tia how wonderful is it to forgive people thank you for telling me the story i will tell it to john too i am sure he will like it okay shall we go home now i think it's getting late Aren't you going to your friend's party? No, Tofu. Mummy has asked me to stay home with you tonight because she and Papa will be returning home late. Oh no. I'm sorry, Tia. Because of me, you can't go to your party. It's okay, Tofu. Sometimes we have to sacrifice things for the ones we love. Just like the little mermaid. Little mermaid. Is it a story? Tell me, Tia, please. The little mermaid. Once upon a time, there was a sea kingdom at the bottom of the sea. The king of the seas had six beautiful daughters who were mermaids. They were all very beautiful, but the youngest of them was the prettiest of them all. She had a gentle face, big round eyes, and a voice sweeter than anyone else's in the world. When the little mermaid turned 15 years old, her grandmother called her to her room. "Come, my darling. Today you have turned 15." And from now onwards you can go to the world above. Just remember the people above are very different from us. They do not have a beautiful fish tail like us. Instead, they have two legs. Thank you, grandmother. I have waited for this day for so long. When I return, I will tell you about everything I see above. That night, the little mermaid went to the surface of the water. The sight of the stars and the cool breeze that touched her face took her breath away she was just getting used to the feeling when she saw a big ship cross in front of her aboard it were many men and they were celebrating the birthday of the young prince who had just turned 16 The little mermaid was mesmerized with the handsome looks of the prince She couldn't take her eyes off him as the ship sailed past her She was so lost in him that she did not notice the storm build up in the sky and the sea begin to rage the ship had only sailed a little further when the storm shook it up 
The sailors tried to stir it to safety, but many men, including the prince, fell into the sea. The little mermaid rushed to him and saved him from drowning. She took him ashore. Don't worry, you are safe. Open your eyes. But the prince lay unconscious. The mermaid decided to get help. When she couldn't get any, she came back to where the prince was. She saw him surrounded by many people. A beautiful princess was kneeling by him as others worked to awaken him. The prince opened his eyes and the little mermaid was relieved that her prince will be saved now. You saved my life. Thank you. The prince knew nothing about the little mermaid. He didn't even know that it was she who had actually saved his life. This broke the mermaid's heart. She went back to her father's home. She told her sisters and grandmother what had happened. Forget him, child. Humans and we are very different. To be with him forever, you will have to get him to love you more than anything else he loves in the world, even more than his own parents. How will that ever happen? Think about it. But the little mermaid could not forget the handsome prince. Every night she visited the spot where she had laid him after saving his life. One day, she decided to visit the witch in her father's kingdom. Maybe she knew a way that the mermaid could be with the prince. I can send you to the land above the sea. You will lose your fish tail and have legs. If by the second sunset you can get the prince to love you more than he loves his parents, then you can be with him forever. Otherwise, you will die and become foam in the sea. But in return, you must give me your voice. But without my voice, how will I make the prince fall in love with me? You still have your pretty face and eyes. You will also be the most beautiful dancer anyone has ever seen. Now go! In a flash, the mermaid found herself on the land. Her fish tail turned into human legs. It caused her pain, but she could not even scream because the witch had taken her voice away. Somehow, the mermaid made her way to the prince's castle. There was a big celebration going on there. But the guards would not let the mermaid enter because they didn't know who she was and she couldn't answer them when they asked her about it. So she was not allowed to enter. Somewhere in the castle, music started playing. 
Remembering what the witch had said about dancing, Little Mermaid started dancing. Oh, I have never seen anyone dance so beautifully. Maybe she has come to dance for the royal family in the celebrations. Oh, she is a dancer. Let me take her to the court. Once the mermaid reached the royal court, she saw that the celebration was for the wedding of the prince. Little mermaid was heartbroken. She thought the only way of meeting the prince now would be to dance and draw his attention towards her. And so she performed a beautiful dance for the royal family. When the prince saw her, he came up to her. Hello young lady, I have seen you in my dreams. Who are you? In his heart, the prince hoped that she would be the one who had saved him from drowning. He longed to hear the voice that had saved him when he was dying. But no sound came out when the little mermaid tried to reply. Forgive me, I think I am confused between you and someone else. But please do join us. The prince led her to the ship on which the wedding was going to take place. Many people spoke to her but she could not answer anyone. The princess was especially kind to her and took special care of her. I know you saved the prince that day. Thank you, because of you, I have found the love of my life. Please, always stay with us. The little mermaid saw that the princess and the prince loved each other and were very happy together. She decided not to pursue the prince anymore. He belonged to another woman. Although her heart ached to let him go, she happily attended the wedding and all the celebrations that went on throughout the next day. Soon it was evening. The second sunset was about to happen. The little mermaid knew she would die and become foam on the sea. As she stood there, looking at the prince and his princess, she heard some voices behind her. She turned around to see. Her sisters were there in the water. But all of them had very short hair now, instead of the long flowing locks they used to have earlier. Sisters, what are you doing here? We have come to save you. We went to the witch. In exchange of her hair, she gave us this knife. If you stab the prince through his heart before sunset, you can be saved. Handing the knife to the youngest sister, 
all the other sisters vanished under the water once again. The little mermaid stood there holding the knife to her heart. She looked at the newlyweds once again. She knew what she had to do. At the sunset, she tossed the knife into the sea. Goodbye, my love. And so, for the happiness of her beloved prince, the little mermaid sacrificed her own life and joined the sea as foam. Tia, this is such a beautiful story. It shows how much the little mermaid loved the prince. Thank you for not going to the party and staying with me. That's because I love you, my little brother. I love you too, my darling sister Tia. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.